today is an interesting one. Today we talk about too busy for real relationships. Too busy for real relationships. We, we in the last two weeks, have talked about how busy our lives get. And we talked about we need to take care of our calendar. We need to harness our calendar and make sure that we're not overscheduling ourselves so that we're missing all of the things that we wish we would do. And we talked about making sure that we're not too busy for us, that we're just so busy doing everything else that we're never really filling our own bucket and filling up our own spiritual needs. Today, we're going to talk about too busy for real relationships. How important true friendships are in your life. God says they're important. Jesus says they're important. Jesus had his own friends. Think about that. God, when he came to earth as a person in Jesus Christ, even he made sure that he had close friends to walk through this life with. So that must mean it must be important for you. It's interesting. I saw this tweet, and it's gone around a bunch. Um, But it says, Jesus' greatest miracle was having 12 close friends in his 30s. Um, and this is the challenge because if we're being honest, friendships can be really hard as adults, deep, true, real friendships can be kind of hard to keep up as an adult. For many of us, friendships came easier as a kid. We, we bonded over, uh, being classmates or playing on the playground or, or TV shows or, or, um, you know, playing sports or hobbies or things like that. But as adults, finding and keeping friends becomes much more complicated. Our time is split between work and family and church and activities. And even though we are connected as never before, we can still feel isolated and alone and lacking true friendships. And... I think also today, the impact of social media in our lives, I think we've lost sight of what true friendship really is. I think we've, we've cheapened it. We, we've settled for friendship light instead of what truly friendship is about. Because real friendship, the, the kind that Jesus modeled and had, is something much different than we see today. And the truth is, despite whatever you might think about yourself, Everyone needs friends. We were never meant to walk through this life alone, and we need to understand what it means to be a good friend. Because in order to have a good friendship, you need to be a good friend as well. So that's what we're going to dive into today. And what I want you to understand before we go into anything else is this. The number of people we know does not equal the number of friends that we have. Do you get that? Some of us, we're like, oh man, you know, I know people everywhere. That's not friends. That's not friends. And so uh, this morning, let's just dive into it. The types of friends that we see. And the first one is this, digital friends. We have plenty of digital friends. And that means that you, you only see the pictures of the good things. You only hear the stories of the good things. Maybe you have a friend that constantly rants about their life on social media, and so you see that. Um, but you don't ever get to see the depth of what their life is. And nobody gets to see the depth of what your life is. Nobody sees your struggles or your challenges that you, you hide from everyone else. And we don't get to see theirs. It's not a real friendship. And so I don't care how many friends you have, and especially younger people. It, it, you know, it's, it's really interesting working with your youth. Because we, we did a mission trip uh, just a couple weeks ago, and we took away their cell phones. And that was sad. <laughs> I, I'm talking about as an adult, that was sad to see. That these kids literally didn't know how to turn and talk to one another. But it was amazing because after a little time in a bus and and a little time driving around, a little time serving side by side, all of a sudden, you know, the the chatter in the the vans is going and they're talking and they're hanging out. But when you take away their cell phones, it's amazing how, how isolated they realize they are. Because they think just because I can text somebody and just because I can look at their pictures and just because I know that Susie went over there today, I I feel like I have friends. It's not true friendship. And that's the first thing that we have to catch. Digital friendship is not true friendship. The second type of friendship is transactional friendship. And these are really more of acquaintances. These are the people that we say, you know what, I want to get to know this person because um, it might be good for my career or it might be um, getting me into a different friendship circle or they can connect me with this person. And the thing about transactional friendships is you don't actually know anything significant about one another. You 
typically have the same conversations over and over so that you don't have to stand in awkward silence with them? Do you ever have somebody like that? That you, you walk up and you're like, hey, how about those bears? You know, just so you don't have to stand there in quietness and, and be weird. Or, or you have those transactional friends that are more for amusement. You don't trust them with anything important. You don't, you don't actually share anything valuable. They're just kind of there for your amusement. I mean, it's, it's the kind of friend that if they called and asked you for help to help them move or something, you would definitely find a way or an excuse out of it. Like, you don't like them that much. It's just a transactional thing. It's just, how can this person be a benefit to me? But we call them friends, but they're not really friends. The next category that we see in life today is circumstantial friends. And what this is, is they're really only friends because of the circumstances of your life. You, you work together, or you're, they're your next-door neighbor, or uh, your kids are in similar things, or, or um, you have similar hobbies, but your friendship is seasonal. If they were to move, you wouldn't really miss them. If, if they were to, to uh, not be around for a season, you would be fine just seeing them again. Um, you connect around certain things, and that's the only time that you really have them around, your circumstantial friends. And then the last one it, is real friendship. And what Jesus is telling us today is he desires for you to have real friendship. That it is that important to him that you truly connect with one another and that you have people to walk through this life with. And, and he says it uh, in John 15. And we, we read this earlier. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are, now how crazy is this? Jesus, the son of God, says this to, to the disciples. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know the master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I've made known. And so I want to break this down real quick because this is big. Because Jesus is telling us what true friendship really is. And so when we look at that, it looks a little something like this. First, it's known, knowing and being known. True friendship means you stop pretending to be something that you think people want to see and you let someone see who you really are. And that's scary for some people. Because some people are like, well, if I let all my crazy out, I'm not going to have friends. Um, knowing and being known. How many of you would it be comforting to truly just be able to be yourself and have someone be your friend? That's what God wants. And Jesus just said it. True friendship is knowing and being known. Being vulnerable with one another. And it needs to be reciprocal. How many of you have a friend that shares way too much? And you're like, you know what? I'm just not at that depth with you. Uh, it's awkward. But true friendship is knowing and being known. True friendship is also accepting and being accepted. We accept each other with all of our quirks and our uniqueness. It's letting someone see who you are, and it doesn't mean they love everything about you. You don't have to love everything about them, but you accept it, and you welcome them. It's love, loving and being loved. And Jesus said this as well, that the greater love has no love than this, than to lay down your life for your friend. True friends love each other, meaning they will put the other person first. So if you have a friendship where your friend always dictates what's happening and decides everything and they don't ever consider what you would want in the friendship, that's not a reciprocal friendship. True love and friendship is saying, I love you and I want what's best for you and I put you first and you put me first. We, we love reciprocally. The, the next one is um, serving and being served. Friendship can't be one-sided. It can't be self-serving. Well, I get what I want out of this friendship, and then I leave them behind. Or It's serving each other. It's a give and take. And both relationships end up satisfied. And the last thing from Jesus' description that we get is it's celebrating and being celebrated. Friends do not get jealous of each other. They celebrate. When your friend wins, you are ecstatic. You are their biggest fan. True friends celebrate and encourage one another. And they show up at each other's life events. They cheer the victories. They're joyful at milestones. 
So now if we see what Jesus describes true friendship as, how many of you have one real friendship? How many of you have three real friendships? Five, ten. Because that's where we're going today. Because I would imagine there are some of you in the room today that go, I don't know that I have any. I'm not, I'm not, I have parts, but I don't know that I'm truly getting the full blessing of what God lays out for friendship. If God is saying, this is what I want for you, and I'm putting people in your life for you to experience this with, to walk alongside of you. And, and let's be honest, men have a much harder time having true friends than women. If we were to do a poll in this room, the women would most likely have at least one, maybe a couple. The men would almost all struggle to say they have one. That's just the statistics of what we see in America today. And so our challenge for this week is this. Each week I've given you a challenge. Our challenge for this week is this. Evaluate your friendships. Evaluate your friendships. And how we do that is really simple. Um, you need to identify the good ones, and you need to identify the bad ones. And you need to decide which ones do I need to, to invest more in to truly get what I'm supposed to get out of this and, and truly be a real friend, and which ones do I need to pull away from because they are not helpful. And to help you decide, um, here are some qualifiers that we get from the Bible. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 15. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship and light can have with darkness? Um, can there be harmony between Christ? And that's a, a God of that time period, uh, a false God of that time period. Um, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Now, this isn't saying don't have any unbelieving friends. This is simply saying don't be unequally yoked. Why? Because character rubs off. Have you ever noticed that about friends? Character rubs off. How many of you have kids and, and you say what to them as they start school or head off to college? Make good friends. Make good friends. Because character rubs off. And, and we see this, uh, Proverbs uh, 6 gives us a, a description of the type of character that God hates. And it says it right there. And so we, we look at this and it, it says haughty eyes and, and Basically, that means prideful and arrogant. Do you have someone that is constantly saying, we matter, they don't. I'm sophisticated, they're not. They're plain. I'm enlightened, they're ignorant. I'm good looking, they're average. I'm slim, they're chunky. I'm married, they're single. I'm better person, they're not. I'm young, they're old. I, I'm a career woman, they're a stay-at-home mom, as if that's something less. Um, I'm, I'm a businessman, he is a, a day laborer. I'm a city person, they're a suburb person. If you have a friend that is constantly prideful and arrogant, that can rub off. A lying tongue dishonesty. Do, do you have a friend that is constantly exaggerating and constantly lying, omitting, or do you have one of those friends that's just f uh, fake flattery all the time? That sits there and says things to people's face and then turns around and goes, I hate her. And you're like, why did you just say that she's your best friend? That rubs off. The, the next two, innocent blood and wicked schemes, mean-spirited. I think for men, this is a challenge. Do you, have, do you know a friend that's mean-spirited? They just, they just like to hurt things and people. They get amusement out of it. How many of you, I, I can say this from my college days, the rushing into evil. Um, how many of you know friends that were just looking for trouble? No matter where, they're, they're just looking for it. They, they want it. False witness, that's gossip and slander. How many of you have friends that gossip and slander, that you know they probably talk about you behind their back because all they do is talk about everybody else behind their back. And then divisive, conflict in community. How many of you, we see this a lot in, in female friendships, how many of you has a friend that just likes to get in and turn people against each other just for sport, just gets in and is divisive and conflict constantly in every community they go in? And so God says, these are the character flaws I hate. And he warns us, character rubs off. 
And so if you have a friend that is doing these things, it, that's going to rub off on you. And so what does he tell us to do? It's really simple. It's not fun, but it's simple. God says to prune bad relationships out of our lives. Why? Because just like in gardening, which I'm terrible at if you've been to our house, um, but when you cut something back, it can grow back fuller. It can grow back stronger. It can grow back more beautifully. And so as we talk about being too busy for, for real relationships, if I tell you right now, go and find good relationships and plant them in your garden, you're going to go, okay, but I don't have room. And God says, yeah, prune back the bad ones. Prune back the friendships that you just either need to cut out completely or limit so that you can put in the right relationships around you to make room for healthy, deeper relationships. And, and God tells us in the Bible in multiple places how to do this. Don't avoid them. Don't just say, well, I'm, I'm just not going to call them and I'll just avoid them so I don't have to have an awkward conversation. Don't be judgmental to go to them and say, you know what? You're a terrible person and I can't spend time with you. Don't be judgmental. You choose honesty and grace. That you would go to them and say, look, you know what? I just feel like I'm being challenged right now to, to grow in who I am character-wise. And you know what? You do this and this and this and I, I care about you, but it I find myself doing it too. You're, you are, are causing me to struggle. And I don't want to be that way. Because what God says is that we be honest and, and grace and mercy. And then maybe they will come along with us. And if they don't, okay. Prune it out. But some of you might ask the question, rightfully so, what about our sinful friends? What about our lost friends? What do we do about them? Just cut them all out? Aren't we supposed to build friendships with people that are lost? Yeah. But God is very clear in the Bible. You need to have barriers in those relationships. You need to make sure that you are the one influencing the relationship, not them. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus constantly went around sinners. He constantly went to them, where they were at, to them. But he always invited them to follow out of that. There's no problem with making friendships with those that are, are not in church, that those that are struggling in their sin. There's no problem with that. But you need to be inviting them out of that. You need to enter in and invite out. Jesus never joined. See the difference? And you're like, well, you know, I, I, I'm in with them so that I can get to know. No. In to invite them out. That's the goal. Because what we need to be doing is creating space for newer, deeper growth that will bring better things in your life. This life was not made to walk alone. And when you have others around you with high character, that rubs off too. How many of you have a friend that there's at least one attribute of theirs that you wish you had? That, that you admire them for this and wish you could be like them in that way? How many of you get influenced by being around them to try harder at that? Good character rubs off. And when we talk about good character, it's really simple. Uh, Galatians 5 has the fruit of the Spirit, and we see it. Um, joy, love, joy, peace, uh, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the characters that we should be looking for. These are the characters that we want in our lives to build us up. And so what God is telling us is this, that we need to seek out real friendships. And some of you might have some. God says, grow deeper. Some of you might not have them. Seek them out. And when you find someone that you want to start that relationship with, or you're trying to grow it, here's a couple helpful tips, uh, 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 helpful things to, to do. Uh, first, take small steps. How many of you have ever had buyer's remorse with friendship? You, you meet somebody and you're like, they're amazing. And a month later, you're like, I need to block them on my cell phone. Like, <laughs> don't be that person. Just get to know them. You know, take small steps, invest time, create shared experiences, not coffee. Like, in, you know, we have great coffee. Coffee is good. That's an awesome thing to sit and talk. And, and ladies need that as well. But especially for men, men, if you struggle with finding real friendships, create shared experiences, not sitting down and talking. How many of you men know that you, you are not good at growing relationships by meeting your friend at Starbucks and just letting everything come out. How many of you are having a great time with that? Men, create shared experiences. Do something together. And then the biggest part of real friendships is be the first one to be real. Go first. 
Allow them to respond when ready. C.S. Lewis has this great quote. He said, friendship is born at the moment when one person says to another, what, you too? Let me say that again. C.S. Lewis, Lewis said, friendship is born at the moment when one person says to another, what, you too? That's friendship. When you, have sh when you are willing to share who you are and be vulnerable and let somebody else go, yeah, that's me too. And the last thing of real friendship is you got to show up. Real friends show up. That's what they do. But our problem today, and this is what we've been talking about all month, is that we're too busy. The biggest hindrance to you becoming a better friend and growing in your friendships is you are too busy. And we talked about this. You, you are too busy for yourself. You are too busy for your family and your friends with your calendar and your work. And you're too busy for real relationships. And it's hurting you. You are missing a blessing that God is trying to give you. I mean, God is literally sitting there with a present on the table saying, come open it. And you're going, I'll get to that in like a, a couple hours. I got to do this and this and this. And he's saying, the, the blessing's right here. And then the next day, hey, I am literally putting this person in your life to bless you. If you would take the time to grow deeper and connect and share life, you would find that both of you encourage one another, both of you fill each other up, both of you do it. I'm putting this blessing right here, this present right here. And you're going, yeah, 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 it's going to have to be next week because I am just swamped today. And you are missing out on God's great blessings for you. And some of you are like, well, you know, I, I have my family and I have my kids and I have this and I'll grow in those relationships. Maybe I say this with my wife sitting right here with my kids. Sometimes you need to talk about them rather than to them. Sometimes you need to talk about them before you go talk to them. Do, do you ever have that moment where you're like, let me get this off first and then I'll go deal with that. That's what friends are for. It's a safe outlet that encourages you in the right things. How many of you have ever taken relationship advice to a friend and gotten terrible, terrible advice? That means you need to find better friends so that you can truly go to somebody that you trust and say, yo, we're having problems at home and they're going to give you good godly advice that lifts you up and encourages you in the right ways. That's what God wants for your life. That you would grow as a person and that you would be a part of growing somebody else as a person. That is the blessing that God wants for you. God wants a relationship that would lead to him. That both of you would grow in him and if the other person doesn't know him, that it would lead to a relationship with him. That lives would be changed for eternity. And so here's the biggest point of why we need to have friendships that, that are good for us and allow us to grow when we get filled up we can go out and we can bless others and you can build relationships with people that don't know Jesus so that on the last day as you stand there before the throne that there would be someone that walks up behind you and puts their arm around you and says you know what I'm only here because you took the time to build me up as a friend you walked alongside me when I was ready to give up you walked alongside me through my divorce. You walked alongside me through my, the death of my mom. And I was angry and I was ready to give up. But you, you encouraged me and you strengthened me. And I am only here standing today because God gave me you. That's the beauty of what God wants for you. And that on that day, you would have someone to wrap your arm around and go, you, you are why I'm here. Because you were God's blessing to me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we confess. We are too busy to be the people that you call us to be. So often we are just too busy for, for the relationships that you try to give us. And we neglect things that you put in front of us. Lord, we have let people down with our superficial friendship. We have left people hanging who really needed to talk, who really needed that closeness. 
Lord, there are people who need us and we're not making room for them. And we need to confess that, that we are just too busy. And sometimes, Lord, we have been the negative person. Sometimes we have let our negative friends influence us. And we say, well, they do it, so it's okay for me. And so we gossip, and we're mean-spirited, and we're dishonest. Lord, forgive us for when we have been a bad friend. Let us confess that to you. Let us confess our arrogance and our mean-spiritedness and our dishonesty and our gossiping and our divisiveness. Let us confess that to you now. Heavenly Father, you hear our prayer. Forgive us, strengthen us, and renew us. In the name of your Son, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. God loves you. And he is there to fill you up and to bless you. But it takes being a good friend to have good friends. So go and reconcile. If you have messed up a friendship, if you have been a bad friend, go and make peace. And go forth forgiven and renewed by your God because you are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.